Hello, so in this video, we are going to build our very first Android app. This video is going to assume that you have correctly set up all the tools that are required to do Android development, which means you have either Java Development Kit version 1.7 or 1.8 installed, and you have Android Studio along with the Android SDK properly installed. You can use either the Android Studio version 3.0 or you can use Android Studio version 2.3 to go through this video. In this video, I am using Android Studio version 3.0. We're going to go and click on Start New Android Studio Project. When we do that, the first thing that we need to tell is the name of your application. You can name your application anything. It needs to be in alphabet, so you can have numbers, but it should not begin with a number. And it can have spaces in between. This is the name of the application when it is installed. That is how it's going to look like to the user. Let's call this my first app a uh, company domain is basically a string used to create the package name of your app you don't actually need to own a company and your company does not need to actually have a website you can write any string in the format of a.b or a.b.c here we i can write here codingblocks.com which will in effect turn my package name to com.codingblocks.myfirstapp and another thing that you can set is where is this project going to be saved you can choose any location that you want i'm going to save it to this particular location you have an option to include c++ support inside your project or not and you have an option to include kotlin support inside your project or not the first Android app that we're going to build is going to be made purely in Java without any Kotlin support. We will be covering Kotlin later on in the course. And we're going to press next, which will take us to the target Android device selection screen. Now this screen asks you which kind of Android devices does this project apply to. You can select Android things, Android Auto, Android TV and Android Wear if your mobile app is going to target any one of these platforms. If it's a general app that targets phones and tablets like most of the apps in the world, you have to select phone and tablet. Inside that you need to decide which is the minimum version of Android your Android project is going to target. Selecting this is an important trade-off. The older Android versions if you want to support would result your app being available to more people. But that would also mean that you can off, you can use only very few Android features because the new features that were added in newer versions of Android cannot be used in such an app. A good trade-off would be to select Android API version 21, which means 71% of the devices in the market as of today, which is January 2018, will be able to support this app. Going forward, even more people would be on Android versions lollipop and above. Then we're going to go to the next screen. Here, we have to select what is the first activity of our screen going to look like. Now, you can usually select add no activity here and go forward and customize your app whichever way you want to. But in this screen, if you select any one of these options, which is uh, empty activity, if the most simple one, or if you want to create an activity that uses Google Maps, or you want to create an activity that uses a setting screen kind of in layout, you can select that and the basic setup would already be done for you. What we will do is we will select an empty activity and proceed. We need to give our activity a name. Now, what really is an activity? We're going to discuss this further uh, in our course. But an activity basically means when your user opens your app and the first screen that opens up in which the user can do something, those kind of screens are called activities. Activities are used to create user interfaces in Android. And then you need to write whether your activity needs a layout file. Layout files are files which are written in XML, which is a very declarative language where you can decide what you'll layout is going to look like. If you have developed uh, websites using HTML before, then layout files are going to look very familiar to you. We are going to click on finish and we will have to wait a little while while Android Studio builds this project for the first time and creates it. If you're building an Android app for the very first time on your computer, this building step might take a little bit of time because it will be downloading some libraries from the internet. You need to make sure that when you first time you're building your app, your computer is connected to the internet because otherwise you might have problems in setting the app up for the first time ever.
Once your project is set up, you will see that there are two screens open for you. One is called main activity.java, which is the Java class which decides how our activity is going to run. And the other file is called activity underscore main.xml, which is an XML file that tells how the screen is going to look like. Your XML file will also have a design section. If you go to the design section, you can see how this app is going to look like when it runs on your device. If you are editing it in form of XML file, and you want to see the preview you can open the preview box and when you make changes here you will see the previews changing for example if i want to change the text from hello world to hello student and i make the changes here and they are immediately reflected on my screen let us now run this app and see how it looks like on our phone to run your app you need to go to run and click on run app or there is a shortcut to that as a button here okay um, we'll go and click on this run app button and while we're doing that a device needs to be connected to your laptop and the development mode should be on on the device we click on run app and we see device that we can select on which we can run this app so we select this device which is connected to my computer and I'm gonna start it. We can use an emulator instead of an actual device connected to the computer as well but emulators can slow down your computer so I would personally recommend not using an emulator and running your device running your app directly on your Android phone if it is possible for you to have an Android phone. As you can see the first app is built and then it is installed and then the activity is launched once the activity is launched we can see it on our phone screen um, this is uh, basically a mirror of my phone screen displayed uh, for you here and as you can see this is how my app looks like and it says hello student okay to make sure that your phone shows up inside android studio as one of the available devices for development you need to turn on development mode to be able to turn on development mode we need to go to settings and inside settings we need to go to developer options and inside developer options we need to turn on usb debugging or android debugging as it says on some devices only if android debugging is enabled that when we run an app we see the phone on the list of devices so if you have been able to cover till now and you have been able to run an app on your device so congratulations you have the first android app running on your device in the next few videos we are going to see what is the structure of this android project and what does an activity really mean and how we can change the layout of our activity to create our own user interface thank you